We don't know how this crossing is going to go. That plane kept circling. Without a doubt, it was a surveillance plane. And then all of a sudden, this pickup truck comes rolling over the Badland Hills, and he shouts from the truck, boys, no sudden movements. I'm coming in to check you out. He told us specifically to sit next to the canoe for the next hour or so until he came back. And when he did return, he said, we've decided you don't have to go to the border. He saved us a good 10 mile hike from here into town. The hardest part of this entire journey has just been wiped right off the map. My name is Brian, and this is my best buddy. And his name is Brian too. Out of all the water in the world, only 1% is fresh water. It's all we got, and we want to explore all of it. So we've decided to start with a trip that's never been done before. A 4,000 mile journey from Milk River, Alberta, all the way down to New Orleans, Louisiana. Oh, and did I mention we're gonna do it in a canoe? we're crazy? You're right. We're the Paddling Brines. Now that we finally crossed the border, New Orleans may still be five months away, 3,000 miles, but it seems a hell of a lot closer right now. Welcome to the US, eh? For some reason, it feels like we're just days away from New Orleans. This feels good. But in reality, we're still uh, just, just at the beginning of our voyage. We'd stop for the night on a little sandbar. When, when we first looked at it, it seemed like a great spot to camp, but uh, we quickly realized after we got most of our gear on the sandbar and, and half set up, that um, it was more of a mud bar than, than a sandbar, and everything started to sink in it. So we quickly, uh, you know, we lost the shoes, and uh, you know, I, I already had the shorts on, and Brian just, just took off everything but his boxers. Well, I got a feeling that the woods maybe got the better of Brian already. I mean, he just pulled over, Started to set up camp and Brian just stripped down to his boxers and headed off into the muck. He's definitely up to something. I think I had a bit of heat stroke because as soon as we hit land, I ran out of the boat, stripped down to my boxers to try and cool down, started rolling around in the mud because I heard somewhere, I don't, I don't know what I was thinking, but I think it stops the sun from hitting the, be like burning your body or something, I don't know. Maybe I'll just videotape Brian playing in the mud for a little bit longer. Oh, right. there, there you go. Become real bushman. <laughs> now he's all dirty. Well, hope you're planning on going in the river before you come into the tent, because... Yeah, I know for sure I'm going swimming. It's too hot. The mud really cools you down, though. I think this is an old Indian trick. So I rolled around in the mud anyway, and it was really cooling. It cooled me right down. So then I went and got firewood. It's a good thing you're doing all the work tonight, and I'm just standing around filming. I don't even know if he wants me to be filming right now. I kind of just thought this was pretty much a, an interesting little event, and that uh, you guys, the viewers, might like to see Brian. Brian, well, for those of you that know Brian, Brian being Brian. But for everybody else, Brian being a little bushman. Probably a little bit more because Brian likes to be on camera and, and, and prance around in his underwear than, than anything. <laughs> I bet you're probably thinking covering myself in mud is pretty silly. But it's actually, it's actually a trick I learned off this guy. Um, it uh, accomplishes absolutely nothing. Okay, thank you. That's all. That's all I got for that one. I, just, I was just really excited about making it into Montana clear in the border. 
you know. Weather in Montana is beautiful. The motto for the state is Big Sky Country, and you know it's it's pretty easy to see why. There's uh, there's not too many mountains nearby, and it's uh, blue sky as far as the eye can see. The Milk River finally opened out into uh, to the Fresno Reservoir. Fresno Reservoir, hell, what a, everyone's out boating. We showed up on a Sunday, this is beautiful. It was a beautiful reservoir filled with tons of people out on speed boats, uh, jet skis, uh, little fishing boats. We actually ran into a really friendly family uh, that were out just for a day in their speed boat and uh, they offered to hook a line to us and tow us to the other side of the lake. You Where are you headed? We'd love to accept it, but uh, we're actually paddling to New Orleans. And uh, we told ourselves two years ago when we found this that uh, we do it under our own power. So. Are you going there? Uh, that's something to do. The only way we figured we could afford five months off work. <laughs> that's actually the, really, the real reason. <laughs> These are the kind of people I hope we keep encountering on the trip. Show them where we're at, Bri. This is the boat launch for the Fresno Reservoir. And this is the landfill dam. And there's the bridge over here, right over the actual dam. And we're just so happy to be back in civilization. And uh, there's a chance we might be able to get some cold pops tonight and maybe even some ice cream. Who knows? This day is looking up. Stoked, buddy. For the first time in a while, I'm thinking. We, we are going to make it to New Orleans, man. We're going to make it like ahead of schedule and under budget. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The biggest challenge so far in the trip is coming up. At least this is the hardest part. We get it done right away. After this is downhill. It just sucks. We got to stop every five, ten minutes to hydrate. We're doing this huge portage, and now Brian's puking. <coughs> well, I got a feeling that the woods maybe got the better of Brian. I think I had a bit of heat stroke because as soon as we hit land, I ran out of the boat, stripped down to my boxers. Maybe I'll just videotape Brian playing in the mud for a little bit longer. Oh. Brian likes to be on camera and prance around in his underwear. Show him where we're at, Brian. This is the boat launch for the Fresno Reservoir. Stoked, buddy. We're gonna make it like ahead of schedule and under budget. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's really great that we're having fun right now uh, tonight because uh, tomorrow the biggest the, the biggest challenge so far in the trip is coming up and uh, it's going to be pretty tough. When we started off the day for the big portage, it, uh, it's one of the hottest days we had got so far. Not a cloud in the sky as usual for Montana. This is it, buddy. You got that nervous feeling like before a hockey game or a football game. First 300 yards is uh, pretty much all uphill on a dirt road, and uh, by the time we got uh, halfway up it, we started to wonder, uh, are we going to be able to do this whole portage? We're going to pick up a pretty good pace and then just give her a little jog, short steps. Just like football. At least this is the hardest part. We get it done right away. After this is downhill. Uh, uh. As far as the portaging went, Brian was definitely pulling his weight. That rope box that Brian's pulling weighs about 80 pounds. His pack weighs about 50. And the kitchen set weighs between 30, I'd say about 35 pounds. Portaging, well, especially in these, in our situation, portaging becomes a lot harder because we have about 800 pounds of gear. It's not fun. It's not like your average portage. It's, it's really... It's really long and, uh, and it's time consuming. Uh, there's ups, there's downs, there's rough terrain. It just sucks. Not what I want to be doing with my day off the river. We've come to the end of our paved road. That was only about 200 meters of paved road. It was nice while it lasted. At least we're still on the down slope. We decided it was a good idea to strap the camera to the front of the boat 
on our really crappy tripod we had. And we ended up hitting some pretty rough terrain and we were pretty sure that it, we were gonna lose that camera right then and there. We're coming up on, whoa, holy shit. Okay, we're not gonna do this. Um, and at our first portage, ruining our only filming equipment to document our journey would have been gone. We were pretty worried about that. We're trying to hydrate like crazy. I mean, we got to stop every five, 10 minutes to hydrate. We're just losing water like mad. Hopefully we'll hit a lot more paved roads on our portages than, uh, than dirt gravel ones like this. Cause this ain't too much fun. Portaging is a bitch. All right, we're at the beginning of the dam. Yeah. That's two thirds at that bridge. How are you feeling, buddy? I'm feeling tired, feeling hot as all hell. I don't think we bargained for being in the desert. And uh, last I checked, Montana wasn't the desert, but God damn it, does it feel like the desert. We couldn't have done this trip without portaging because there, there's, you know, eight major dams on this river and there's just, there, there's no way around it. Oh, I can't wait to get back in the water, man. We're doing this huge portage and, and now Brian's puking. <coughs> Brian thinks I was hung over off of three beers. Like, <laughs> Brian doesn't know me well, obviously. <laughs> no, but it was, it was actually, it was just sunstroke. It was, you know, hiking with all our gear, all the physical activity we had to do. And with that sun beating on you, it's, it, I was puking from sunstroke. The effects of too much heat. Oh yeah. And too much hard work. I think that's heat exhaustion, man. Yeah, it probably is. Well, we just took the thermometer out and it's reading 37, 37.4 degrees Celsius. I don't know if Brian can keep going. Well, turn that, turn that thing off. Now. Let's... <coughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll turn it off. Okay. <clears throat> well, I'm feeling a little better. We took a 10 minute break, hydrated. I get, I get that happens sometimes when I get too hot. Um, I guess it happens to everybody. This it's the Fresno Dam. is the Fresno Dam. We're two thirds of the way. Just gotta make it across the bridge. I don't know if you guys can see that little dirt road. Right down over by those shrubs and we can put ourselves in the water. Yeah. Anyways, what do you say? Let's uh let's, let's get her. Let's get her done. Get her done. Go big or go home, huh? Glad we finally made it though. Be happy to just put paddles in the water. It's way easier than being a Sherpa. And that's how you hump 800 pounds of gear over a dam. We're just so happy that, uh, you know, we, we decided not even to do that much more work today and we're just gonna, we're just gonna swim in the river, have a good time and uh, just, just enjoy our accomplishment. Okay, we just finished uh, the first major portage and we are beat, tired, boiling hot. So we're gonna go cool off the Formula Canoe Way. Clock 20 miles left to have her, no problem. We're just leaving the Fresno Dam, our first major portage. Now that the canoe's back in the water, the portage from hell is done. We make it around a bend and out of nowhere, we see a big danger sign. I'm gonna go make sure it's no crazy rapids or dam or something that our maps don't show. In our situation, portaging becomes a lot harder because we have about 800 pounds of gear. It's not fun. It's not like your average portage. There's ups, there's downs, there's rough terrain. It just sucks. We're doing this huge portage and now Brian's puking. <coughs> Brian thinks I was hung over off of three beers. Like, 
<laughs> Brian doesn't know me well, obviously. <laughs> and that's how you hump 800 pounds of gear over a dam. Okay, so we're just leaving the Fresno Dam, our first major portage. Ooh, a little bit of current here. Now that the canoe's back in the water, the portage from hell is done. We want to get that 20 miles it takes to get us to Haver, be able to relax a bit, get supplies, get restocked for the next go. Now that things are starting to roll, I think it's going to go a lot quicker. I mean, we made this trip assuming nothing terrible happens and we don't hit Haver, but you know what? It looks like uh, this one's in the bag. But we made this trip in 11 days. We had scheduled ourselves for 14, so that's already three days cut short of what we expected. So even if you take those delays, seven days, we're only four days behind schedule. Everything is going great. We're making great distance after we left the Fresno Dam. Beautiful countryside, good current in the water. It's actually clean for once. And uh, we make it around a bend and out of nowhere, we see a big danger sign. What the hell does that mean? What, what's coming up? What did, what's not on our maps now? Okay, so we're about, we're almost within the town limits of uh, Haver. And I guess I spoke too soon there before because danger, no boating, swimming, or fishing beyond this point. We have, we have a half hour till sundown. We wanted to make it to the train yards to camp there, right? Like, this totally sucks. The word danger doesn't usually mean something good's gonna happen. We know Bry, he gets a little worried. So I leave Bry with the canoe and I go check out what's coming up upriver. Whatever, I'm gonna go make sure it's no crazy rapids or dam or something that our maps don't show. Brian thinks that I'm the one that gets stressed out, but in the end, you know, it's, it's Brian that gets stressed out. It's not me that has the vein bulging on the back of my head every time something goes wrong, you know, I, I take it easy. Yo, you're not gonna believe this one. It's a dam that someone decided they didn't want to put on our maps. But it's not a new dam, but it's a dam. There's no barricades or anything, but I think we could get in close. I saw a spot where we could ditch out, right on that bank, on the left side. We're gonna go for it. It's not the biggest dam in the world, but it's, uh, it's too big for us to take the canoe over it. So, as usual, we're gonna have to take everything out and, and portage. Great, another f portage. We got what? 20 minutes till sundown. We're not gonna. We're gonna be working in the in the dark tonight. You know, I'm trying to think. Whose job was it to notice this dam? Oh yeah, Brian's. Contrary to what Brian might tell you, this is something that's not on our maps. We looked at the whole trip. Seven portages. Okay, no big deal. Seven portages over six months. That's fine. One a month. But these maps are. We're doing one a day. This is an unmarked dam. There's, you know, there, there was no mention of this uh, on any, anything that we looked at. And we looked at a couple of different sources when we were making our maps. <laughs> we planned for two years and we still screwed up. Mostly Brian's fault. He can blame me all he wants about this, but, but do you see a dam on this map? Uh, I don't see a dam on this map. All right, so we made it safely across uh, the, uh, the current part of the water. Brian navigated us into a nice little unloading spot we think we might be able to to get around this dam and now we're just gonna go and uh, and check it out see what she looks like at this point it's a race against time we're losing late quick and we got to set up to camp it is not looking good well this well, is the like dam we'll talk to like us there's no way we could have made it over that we got to grab our stuff let's and... offload portage load reload hike Let's, oh yeah, all those things that we love doing. I thought we were done for passion for a while. Yeah, me too. This day is turning out to be definitely by far our biggest day. Yeah, okay. Well, let's go get, get her done. We have so much gear. It's just, you know, maybe less than, a, less than 100 feet. But it's going to take so long to move this 800 pounds of gear. And already we're running out of light. We, we don't have time for this. Good news is, it's only about 200 meters, this portage to cross the dam. Uh, bad news is it's 8.30, the sun just went down. We have to offload everything which takes about a half hour, load everything which takes about a half hour, and 10 trips back and forth, which adds up to a kilometer. So we're going to be doing a night run for the next five kilometers into town center, Bri. 
We set out to go canoeing. I'm done with walking. We're tired of walking. I just want to paddle. I signed up for a canoe trip, not a hiking trip. Guaranteed it's pitch black by the time we get on the river again. Regardless, we're, we're just going to have to deal with it. We have to get to Haver tonight and it's starting to look like we're not going to have enough light and we're going to have to start canoeing in the dark. As you can see, the stars are starting to come out. Uh, you can probably barely, barely see us. Um, lighting for night shots is one thing that we don't have. Our light that was supplied for us uh, was uh, a plug-in. You needed an outlet. So we don't have uh, we don't have night shots that well. We do have, we have traded the sunglasses in for night lamps. There you go, you get the right one because you have the leader. We had to canoe after dark. We had to pull a night run. and. We're not prepared for anything like that. We don't have night vision. We have, you can't canoe a river you don't know. You've never been down in pitch black. You really can't see anything on the water. All right, buddy, let's go. Midnight run, so we're gonna do it now. Canoeing at night, nobody should canoe at night. We finally got into town. The only way we realized that we were into town because it was so dark and everything was shut down was because we ended up under a bridge. We don't know what time it is. It's probably somewhere around midnight. We're under the bridge, the bridge that separates North Haver from downtown Haver. Um, there's absolutely nowhere to camp. I ran into the IGA. I picked us up a 12 pack of beer, uh, some sandwiches. Um, our canoe's fully loaded and ready to go. We could ship out at any time. All we have are our chairs out, our beer, our food. We're gonna stay here, munch away, maybe take shifts if we get tired, but it wouldn't be the first time for either of us to pull an all-nighter, so under a bridge is just such a sketchy, sh shitty place to stay. But hey, it's all part of the adventure. I mean, you know, it's just, You don't, it's just, you know, it's a little creepy, but. This trip is not working out like I thought it would. As shitty as the situation is, as bad as the situation is, this is what makes it the real adventure. This is the stuff that I kinda, well, I like a lot more than Bri likes anyway. I don't think Brian's at the end of his rope, but I'm pretty close to the end of mine. It's not the Ritz-Carlton, eh? <laughs>